What is up guys, it's ya boy Rick. You gotta have all seals unlocked, be light level 3000, and must have the Galahorn to join the fire team, Akakis here. And today, we've got some brand spanking new Destiny 2 news, courtesy of the Bungie weekly update that has just gone live, unveiling official information. And so, let's get started. Of course, the biggest thing to happen in Destiny 2 this week was the release of the brand new A Scepter Exotic Stasis Trace Rifle via an exotic quest. If you want to know how to get it, I've done a video detailing that exotic quest, so definitely go ahead, click the link up above. And this thing is actually pretty fantastic, especially when you combine it with stasis builds. In fact, I did a video just yesterday about how you could use this Aegir Scepter with a Warlock build, and holy crap, let's just say there's a lot of uh, advantages and synergies when you're using a stasis subclass and you're freezing enemies nonstop with an exotic stasis trace rifle. So this thing is absolutely nuts, have had a ton of fun with it. But some interesting news that you may be unaware of, Bungie has actually confirmed Confirmed that the catalyst for this weapon is becoming available this upcoming reset, uh, September 21st. So that's definitely something to be excited for and to look out for because, again, this thing is already powerful with a catalyst. Whew, the sky's the limit. Moving on from there, however, uh, aside from the TWAB, something else came out today, and that was a brand new hotfix. So, what the heck happened within this hotfix? Well, here's everything you need to know about. Firstly, in terms of some armor, uh, the Precious Scars was not correctly restoring a player's shields on matching weapon kills, so that's been fixed, Precious Scars has been essentially buffed, and the Prometheum Spurs was not spawning a combination rifts on kills, so again, that's been fixed, essentially that's gotten better as well. But moving on to weapons, some important things to know, and perhaps most importantly guys, they increased the effect of both the impact and the detonation of explosive light on rocket launchers to now increase damage by 25%. Guys, this is huge because the ritual rocket launcher no one cared about because it turned out explosive light gave you like a 16% damage increase. Which, why would you use that when you could use Vorpal Weapon that gave you 15% and you don't have to go and collect an Orb of Light? And it actually did less damage than Lasting Impression. So again, no one was interested, but now doing 25% instead of like 16 is actually huge and that might just propel that Ritual Rocket Launcher to the best for overall Rocket DPS. So really exciting news there. Also, they fix an issue where the Danger Zone a perk was not functioning correctly on rocket launchers. They actually nerfed Shoot to Loot a little bit. Uh, they increased the cooldown to 4 seconds for it to work. They also made it so that you couldn't like walk over it and shoot it at the same time to get additional ammo. And they fix an issue where if you had the last bullet on the Hawk Moon and then you took out your ghost and had a hand cannon loader on, it would reload just the last bullet. So you could basically have, you know, infinite one-shot kills in PvP. It was pretty silly. But guys, moving on from there, Bungie actually finally released a seasonal calendar of sorts. Here it is, and unfortunately, it is still pretty vague. So we see August to September. This is the start of Season of the Lost. This is everything we have right now. Then we have October to November. So here we have the Festival of the Lost Halloween event. So it says masks, candy, and haunted sectors activity. So apparently Bungie is going to be doing something with likely lost sectors to incorporate them into Festival of the Lost. That's pretty exciting. And we also see a sneak preview of the dinosaur themed armor sets. I think they look absolutely incredible. And in addition to that, we have the Season of the Lost update. So we're going to have Grandmaster Nightfalls and the Astral Alignment and Shattered Realm difficulty options. So there is going to be heroic or master astral alignment and shattered realm likely dropping more and better rewards uh, for completing a harder challenge. That's pretty cool as well. Then moving on from there, from December to February, we have the Bungie 30th anniversary event. So new dungeon, the Galahorn exotic quest, a new six player offensive, iconic weapons from Bungie's past, and much more. And then we also have seasonal events happening here as well. So we are going to get moments of triumph sometime within this period, and we're also going to get 
the dawning and that's the kind of Christmas event. So interesting to see where those are going to fit in here. Like is Moments of Triumph going to start in December for only a couple weeks and then transition right into the dawning? Or is the dawning going to happen first and Moments of Triumph is going to be like in January, end of February? Again, it's really interesting to see, but it's vague. But at least we get an idea of some of the things that are coming. Now, moving on from there, Bungie talks about Trials of Osiris. It was available for the first time during Season of the Lost last weekend, and it got a massive overhaul. You know, wins didn't matter so much as round wins. Loot was substantially more available. If you did get even one Trials Engram, you could focus it into the exact loot you want. You could actually matchmake, and although the solo and duo queues didn't have the greatest time sometimes, they literally wouldn't even be able to play previously. So the reception was insane. Guys, here is a graph they released. So we had the highest Trials of Osiris player count in Destiny 2 history by a lot with over 750,000 players playing. And you can see, like this is the entire history. These are the player counts of every single Trials of Osiris from March 2020 now to August 2021 and it's like it eclipses the previous numbers by so much essentially it almost doubles the last highest which is over there in February and that was actually the weekend that the Igneous Hammer was available on a three win reward and so most of those players are just people who jumped off the edge to get an easy Igneous right so a lot more people were playing uh, this weekend and that is huge that is telling Bungie they're actually doing something right and it's actually worth investing in PvP activities. But there's actually a few more changes coming to Trials tomorrow for the second weekend. So first off, one of the big changes is that if you go flawless, you can keep that card and not reset it. And then if you keep playing with that flawless card, you're actually going to continuously get flawless loot. That's what I did. And I got a ton of the adept uh, SMGs. Like I would get like three for three games in a row. It was very, very rewarding. However, the matchmaking there wasn't great. Like it would matchmake flawless people with people who were kind of just starting. So now there's going to be a flawless matchmaking pool and that is going to try to match make people who have gone flawless with other people who have also kind of gone flawless but to ensure that there is enough players to maintain this pool uh, they're going to wait until friday afternoon to turn this on so if you do go flawless right away friday morning you can grind out uh, those seven wins against just like last weekend against not flawless players for a considerable amount of time and then they're going to enable it later in the day but another thing they're going to change involving matchmaking is they're going to have a temporary help mechanic for players who are repeatedly getting thrashed 5-0. So if you are getting absolutely dominated, uh, it's going to throw you in with easier and easier players, uh, at least that's what it seems, until you start winning again, and then it's going to start throwing you back into the normal pool. So yeah, again, these things are going to just make a loot more accessible for everybody. But guys, another thing coming tomorrow in Trials is that they're going to enable the quitter penalties that they used on the Glory playlist. So giving you a 30 minute timeout if you quit too many games. And they're going to be watching this and have some harsher plans if players continue to abandon their fire teams. And I know personally, uh, when I unfortunately got paired with some like solo queues, often one person would just leave. And then it's like, okay, you didn't have a good chance of winning and now you've completely doomed your teammates. And so that's definitely not a cool thing to do. So I'm glad they do have some uh, more severe quitter penalties. But another trials change for next weekend, guys. So not the upcoming one tomorrow, but the weekend after, uh, there's going to be the first trials labs. And so spoiler alert, it's actually capture zones in trials. That could be really interesting. But they're also going to disable the special ammo replenishment on revive. So you still get special ammo if you kill someone or when you start the next round. Interesting. And another thing they're doing is disabling the matchmaking counter in the trials lobby so you won't be able to tell how many players have joined but will still be told when they join and that's just uh, to prevent people from preying on solo queues. 
And so guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you wanna get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.